and and but you you've got a really cool story i think it was your first trip to new zealand you and you and paula went i don't know how long you'd been dating but you went there and uh you did some research about what was uh, going on there with gold and that's where your life kind of you know obviously is now and things kicked off hey mm, yep it is um and I, I i think we talked about this uh years ago gareth was just kind of i, I was never 100 percent happy teaching and i was like i know there's something else out there it's just finding it and so we were, yeah, Paul and I were together a couple of years and we made a trip to New Zealand one Christmas um, for, I think we were there about three or four weeks. Um, and I knew that this area was a huge, um, was huge in like gold back in like the, the 1800s during the gold rush and stuff. And so I, so I had it set in my mind that I was gonna, that I was gonna go gold panning and, and find enough to, to make my wedding ring. And yeah, so I told her dad and he was just kind of like, okay, yeah, we can go. And uh we went to a few local spots and didn't find anything and yeah went to a few other spots and finally found this little little creek um where we find a little had a little bit of luck finding some things and uh yeah just uh we spent probably geez probably a total of maybe yeah, 30 40 hours <laughs> gold painting, you know like over over the course of the three weeks and um, I was, I was looking to get about, oh, I can't remember exactly what the number was I needed, but I think it was about 15 to 20 grams for the ring I wanted. Um, and I think I found about one or two, maybe one. Yeah. Less than, less than two. So yeah, <laughs> so it was uh, pretty un unlucky that way. But, um, but I ended up do I did have it, uh, made into my, into my wedding ring. So that's actually how I got into, into jewelry making was, uh, like, had the jeweler that that was making the ring and just was kind of curious about what he did and and I knew he taught at a university in London uh jewelry making so I asked him you know what's what went on with the course and stuff and he said oh well you could do the course but you know they might have maybe you know five minutes of one-on-one -on -one time per per course you know session um because of all the other students he goes or I do kind of tutoring one-on-one -on -one, you know at my kind of studio and stuff um, on Saturdays, if you want to do that for a few hours, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds cool. So yeah, I started catching the train on Saturday mornings down to his place and yeah, just learned everything I knew pretty much for, um, during the classes I took from for yeah the next year or so after that. Hmm. That's wow. so cool, man. Pretty full on. And yeah. I mean, it must have been, it must have stimulated something in you when you were gold, when you were panning there and it must have still be, even though you didn't get a lot of gold, it must have even the little twinkles that you did get of gold must have been pretty, must have been like kind of exciting. And there's a kind oh, it of, is. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, like they say when you, um, oh, you like the gold fever, you know, it's yeah. definitely true. You get a little bit of gold and you just go like, <laughs> oh, it might be worth, you know, a cent and, uh, <laughs> for the little bit. But yeah, you're like, you see a little sparkle in it. Yeah. It pumps you up and it keeps you going. And, <laughs> and not only that, but I hadn't really spent much time with my father-in-law. Like they had been over to London to visit us. Um, the kind of the summer before for a couple of weeks but yeah so I th it was just good kind of bonding time as well yeah. during that time because just kind of him and i out there that is the cool. cold freezing creeks you know mm -hmm. freezing cold feet and stuff so yeah no, was, it, that was probably the most important part was just the the bonding rather than cool. actually finding the 30 dollars gold that we <laughs> that we found and being in nature and just yeah exactly oh just stuff, yeah, yeah just beautiful beautiful area and stuff yeah. so alex just moving a little bit on um to sort of one of the more sort of tough times in your life. Um, and actually it's one of your twins, Grace was um, diagnosed with a brain tumor in 2017, which is obviously incredibly tragic and, mm -hmm. and just a super horrible thing to have happened to anyone. Yep. Can you maybe just speak a little bit uh, about that, please? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, it was uh, May, 2017. Um, just, about th three days before mother's day so i can't remember i think it was the 11th or so i think back now but um yeah we noticed grace was walking like her knee was hyperextended so kind of uh, kind of click back when she was walking and then we we kind of looked at her and i saw i noticed it the weekend before and i was just kind of like asking her, i was like grace what are you, why are you walking like that you know like what are you doing just walk normal thinking that she was just kind of goofing around because that's the way she is. And um, 
yeah, she, and she didn't stop and it kept up like that for a few days. And so we got her into the doctor. The doctor said, uh, oh, it's probably just a, you know, an infection or something. She'll be fine, you know, and, and we left. And that next night, about three in the morning or so, one of Paula's, um, Paula's good friends uh, called us. Well, Troll was trying to get a hold of us and um, Grace had actually came into our room and then Paula saw the missed calls. I was like, oh, started getting a bit nervous what was going on. And it, her her friend had actually sent the video of Grace walking to her sister-in-law. So her friends, her friend sent it then to her sister-in-law, who's a um, pediatric neurologist, I think it is, over in Brisbane. And she got a hold of Kelly, who's Paula's friend, and said, look, I think she should go down to the hospital and, and get it checked out right away. You know, it's not, I don't think it's just an infection like the, yeah. the GP had said. And so, yeah, we went, they, they will, we called uh, my father-in-law in the middle of the night. So three, three thirty in the morning, come over. He came over and picked up Grace and Paula and went down to the meeting, which is where the, the closest, you know, big hospital is about three hours away. And um, yeah, they were there all night into the morning, um, got into an MRI kind of four, three, four o'clock the next afternoon. And then Paula called, um, called me. And I was back at home, you know, with the kids all day, just waiting. And um, yeah, called me about seven o'clock that night and said, you know, Grace has a brain tumor. And I remember it was just like an out of body experience. It was just, yeah. Jesus. I, yeah, I remember, it was in my, I, was in, I remember exactly what happened. I remember what I did. I was in the bedroom and I just kind of was just like shouting, no, you know, or just, you know, just, I think that's just the first thing that came out. And, you know, like Paula was awesome on the phone. Like she wasn't crying or anything um, then. And uh, yeah, and I was just in, in full shock. And basically, yeah, she put me on the phone with the doctor and yeah, the prognosis wasn't good at all. And mm -hmm. yeah, he was like, I think you need to get down here right away. So the next morning, yeah, took the trip down there. And, um, and I mentioned like to Gareth that with the whole journey with Grace, there's been so many like signs and this this day the drive down there was so like rainy and miserable and come like out of like the mountains and into like the clearing and so there's nothing on the radio through the mountains and stuff and we come to the clearing and on like my friend's radio who we're riding with like the sun the sun comes out and when the radio starts playing it's a sublime song on the radio no so way like, yeah so it was like just a, a crazy wow you know, like when you, when you have stuff that's happened, there's been so many kind of coincidences that they're not actually coincidences, coincidence, yeah. you know, anymore. There's just been so many. Um, so yeah. So anyway, carrying on with that, um, the, the doctor kind of, um, when we met with him, he, he talked to us and he said, look, we don't know. We have to, we'll have to get a biopsy and find out what's going on with it. And, um, but he goes, oh, but he goes, you know, from the looks of it, it's, you know, pretty symmetrical. Um, you know, it could be it could be a slow growing thing. And I immediately said, Yeah, that's what it is. And he just kind of looked at me like, mm, don't get your hopes up, buddy. You know, like mm. to, to to talk to Paula and my father in law later, they were basically they were basically had no hope for her at all. You know, mm. they were just like they said the looks of like sympathy from the nurses and the doctors and like the anesthetist was crying and stuff. No way. So um yeah, so I missed all that stuff. Um but yeah, I from the from the get go, I had like a positive mindset that things were gonna be okay and that was no other options, you know. So we flew up to Auckland then a couple of the uh, the next day actually. Um she had a biopsy. The surgeon then, who was the top one of the top surgeon brain surgeons in New Zealand, he had a meeting with us and he said, "Look, from what I've seen, it looks good, meaning that is be the you know a, a slow growing tumor." And so, um, yeah, they and it has a cyst attached to it, and the cyst was actually what was pressing on the nerves that were causing her to walk like that. Um, so they drained the cyst while they're in there, and then um, yeah, we stayed in Ronald McDonald House in in Auckland for a few days and then we were back down to um back down home and my mom flew in from the states we had a couple of weeks and they said they were going to call us up and let us know what the results were in, in a couple of weeks so we said okay so we had a couple of weeks go by and they call us and they say we want you to fly up to Christchurch for this meeting 
So we're just like. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold.